Welcome back to all the budding civil servants of this great nation. Today, we are going to discuss a very important topic that could find traction in prelims 2024. It is the news on Vadnagar, India's oldest living city. So let's look at the news. Remains of 2,800-year-old settlement found in PM Modi's village in Gujarat. Remains of a human settlement that dates back to 800 BC have been found at Gujarat's Vadnagar, the native village of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So this particular news article gained great attention for a variety of reasons. So first, let's look at where this Vadnagar is located in Gujarat. It's located in the eastern part of Gujarat, the place where I have highlighted. So let us basically look at some of the important developments with regards to this particular excavation. So if you see evidence of this ongoing cultural activity in Vadnagar, even after the collapse of the Harappans has been discovered by ASI, Archaeological Survey of India and the Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur's joint study. So what they've done is by presenting evidence of cultural continuity in Vadnagar, even after the collapse of the Harappan civilization, they have challenged the idea of a dark age. That's why this particular news gains great amount of traction. So they have just believed the notion that there was a dark age post the fall of the Harappan civilization. So the evidence from the study points to a human settlement in Vadnagar that may have existed as early as 800 BC. So when I say 800 BC, this dates the settlement to oligarchic republic or the later Vedic or pre-Buddhist Mahajanapada period. And another important aspect is that it's hypothesized that extreme climate variations such as variations in rainfall or droughts are what caused the rise and fall of several kingdoms over a 3000 year period and the repeated invasions by warriors from Central Asia. In fact, Vadnagar is characterized as a multicultural settlement with influences from Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, and Islam. And if you see, excavations have thrown to light seven cultural stages that have been discovered. The Mauryan stage, the Indo-Greek stage, the Indo-Scythian stage, the Hindu-Solanki ruled over this area, the Sultanate Mughal period also witnessed continuous uh, inhabitation of these areas and the Gaekwad British colonial rule also throws light on people living in this particular region. So the years of each of these settlements have been given here. And if you see, during the excavation, a number of archaeological artifacts were found including pottery, copper, gold, silver and iron objects. And moreover, adding to the historical and cultural richness of Vadnagar is the discovery of one of the oldest Buddhist monasteries in the area, which is a noteworthy finding. So, the idea of a radio, uh, the idea of a dark age is called into a question by unpublished radiocarbon dates that point to a settlement that may have existed as early as 1400 BC. Okay, so this um, particular uh, unpublished radiocarbon dates, they say that a settlement could have been found in this place as early as 1400 BC. So what is this Dark Age? In Indian history, usually Dark Age is the time between the fall of the Indus Valley Civilization and the rise of the Iron Age. So if this research is accurate, it suggests that India's culture has been stable for the past 5,500 years, damning the existence of a dark age. So you can see a question, the possible question that could be asked, in which city did the joint excavation by the Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur and Archaeological Survey of India reveal evidence of cultural continuity dating back to 800 BC? So you can say that the answer is Vadnagar, it's also known as Barnagar today and during the course of history it's been known by several names like Anarthapura, Anandapur, Chamatkarpur. So it's part of a tradition of living cities. And last year, the city made it to the tentative list of UNESCO World Heritage Site. So the excavations that were carried out in this city can be attributed to B. Subbarao and R. N. Mehta. The excavations had started for the first time in the year 1953. Then we saw the seven successive cultural phases. 
Okay, and then there are several key features about this city of Vadnagar. Water management system is a key feature. The urban landscape has continuously been evolving over a period of time. And it is, at this particular area has served as an important center of Samitya Buddhist. And one can also have an idea about the two major trade routes that intersected this region. And from a historical point of view, from a source of history point of view, we have Huin Song who had mentioned about this particular place. And moreover, Abul Fazl's Aini Akbari also makes note of this place of Wadnagar. And moreover, there are several historical buildings like Ambaji Mata Temple and Hathkeshwar Temple. All these temples trace their age to the medieval period. So this is the greatness of this particular temple. So if we go forward and see, there are several areas that you can concentrate on. For example, let me just uh, give you certain ideas here. There can be questions asked on UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So India has several UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So from this, you can concentrate on those sites and you can get to know them. And uh, there is a comparison that's made to Varanasi as uh, Vadnagar and Varanasi are considered to be living cities. What do you mean by living cities? What kind of a tradition does Varanasi have? You can throw your attention to it. And the excavations are usually carried out by ASI. So get to know about the Archaeological Survey of India, when it was established, who is Alexander Cunningham, what kind of excavations they have carried out. These things you can basically make a study. And then seven successive cultural phases. So you can look at the various dynasties, various periods through which the city has gone through transformation. You can also throw light on those particular periods. And then there is a reference to Samitya Buddhists. So you can just have an idea about what the beliefs and practices of the Samitya Buddhists were. And you can just try to understand the kind of impact the Samitya Buddhists had on the Indian landscape. Okay. And then Abul Faiz Fazl's Aini Akbari, literature during the medieval period, the biographies, you can throw light on that during your preparation. Fine. And most importantly, the historical buildings pertaining to this particular city can also be touched upon. So these are the things that you can basically have a look at from this particular topic. And for more such discussions on important current affairs topics, kindly access the Optima cards and move a step closer to achieving your dreams. So thanks for listening patiently. Have a wonderful day.